I grew up with overprotective parents. One of the memories I have is I was riding my Shetland ponies all over all the time, but I had to check in every 10 minutes. And so one day my mom was coming home. We lived out in the country. And so I was racing down the borrow pit. I was racing her and I got my ass spanked because I wasn't ever supposed to run that Shetland pony. So as soon as I left the house and they were out of sight, away I'd go. I couldn't stay over at friends' houses much. Couldn't date, couldn't go out, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't. Didn't get to drive. I didn't even get to get a driver's license until I was probably 19 years old because they figured I'd kill myself. A funny thing is that they were all worried about I was going to get hurt, but I rode the worst shit on the market. I rode the things that the $100 shitters is what I call them. They gave me a Shetland Pony Stallion. That's what I learned to ride on as a little girl. And nobody in their right mind would let their kids grow up riding a stallion. So my kids are mounted on good horses, and I make sure of that. I just think that kids can learn growing up, and they learn a lot more under a wing with coaching than being told don't and just leave the house and blow a cork. I always swore that I would never raise a child that grew up to be an adult that had to be entertained because I don't like to be around adults that you have to entertain. So they've always had to make up their own games, play on their own time, um, and I always expected help from them, and I still do expect help from them. We raise 40 head of sows, and I can't do it by myself. So it's the kids and I's project, and when I go to worm, run in the horses and worm horses, the kids help me. And when we're weaning babies and catching babies and getting them halter broke, they're helping. And Wiley helps a lot of people. He's kind of that kind of a kid. When they were in school, man, I always, I've talked to him a lot about, you know, you don't bully kids and you don't, you don't ever know what kind of home life a kid has. And that's the thing in life is you don't know what's going on in people's lives and your little bit of kindness could make all the difference in a day. I got a pretty dang good life. I got a, I'm very blessed and so just a, a little bit of kindness to people can make a big difference in lives and I try to impress that upon the kids too. Be kind to people and don't say cruel words and help them out and be nice. Nothing's ever the same. We're never the same. You know, a horse never stays the same. There, you know, as a person or a horse or a child or whatever, there's always a slight change. So you're always getting better or you're always getting worse. So if you just incrementally always just a little worse, pretty soon one day you end up clear down here in this horrible person or this out of control horse or whatever. So if you're always trying to better yourself just a little bit with maybe just a smile or a some patience that you don't really have or a kind word, then maybe you're always getting just a little bit better. Our lifestyle in Chalice, Chalice is such a small town and, it's, and our lifestyle is so far removed, even from Boise, even though it's still Idahoans and I still consider it rural. And I said, just think about our hunters that come here and they're from Indianapolis and they're from New York and yeah. you just think of how wow it must be. And George said, yes, and we got to always remember that in the, our business, we got to always have that wow factor for them because we love what we do. And, we, and this life is, oh, man, the best thing to, for me is to get on the horse and ride back, clear back deep in the frame and in the back country and see the moose and the elk and the squirrels and the wolves and all that. And so to be able to, for a week's time, impart a little bit of that on somebody else is just a really, really neat thing. Seeing the moon and smelling the pines, and it's just a life of Riley. And so for the kids to be able to do it, and that's year before last, we decided to pull them out of school because I was running in and out, and we just want them to be up there with us be there, you know, not have to be running in and out and taking them to school and fighting with the schools and stuff. So, um, you know, in the fall, we're three months in the back country. In the spring, we're six to eight weeks in the back country and the kids are with us. And it's just, it's a neat lifestyle. And I can't, 
I can't imagine the stories they'll be able to tell when they grow up.